Hospital, dedicated to you. Hello there, very good evening and welcome to Prime Time News here on News First, where the people come first. You're joining me now, Veksha Gunasekara. We start off by taking a look at your headlines. An uninterrupted supply of power from today, following electricity tariff hike, says Energy Minister. PUCSL Chairman's Office sealed by police. PUCSL Chairman says tariff hike is illegal and will go to court against it, alone. Supreme Court decides to consider the petition against Neil Bandara Hapu in a circular on local government election. Government printer lacks funds and security as ballot printing process faces obstacles. If you don't have funds, turn to the businessman, Hirunika's proposal to the government. Teenagers who beat a father of one to death with motorcycle helmets in Valipenna, sent to detention. In your top story tonight, Sri Lanka's Minister of Power and Energy, Kanchana Vijay Sekara, announced that power cuts will not be in effect from Thursday. He told reporters in Colombo that after approval was given for a tariff hike, it is now possible to provide an uninterrupted power supply. Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekara was flanked by State Ministers D.V. Chanaka and Indika Anuruddha, as well as the Chairman of the Electricity Board during Thursday's media briefing. After we were given legal approval, the banks have also supported us. The Bank of Ceylon will provide us an additional 22 billion rupees as a loan to procure coal. The People's Bank was requested to provide us an additional rupees 50 billion as a loan. As of this morning, we have to pay the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation 118 million rupees. Starting from today, we will be able to provide an uninterrupted power supply. The tariff revision was not imposed to cover up the losses incurred by the Ceylon Electricity Board over the years. The tariff revision was proposed to cover the cost incurred to generate electricity starting from today. Although the official announcement carried a tariff hike of 66%, a majority of the electricity consumers use between 30 and 90 units and the tariff for the bracket has been increased in an exorbitant manner. The electricity tariff of 360 rupees paid for 30 electricity units so far will be increased to 1,300 rupees. That is an increase of 261 percent. The electricity tariff of 680 rupees paid for the domestic usage of 60 units will increase to 2,560 rupees. That is an increase of 276 percent. The existing electricity tariff of 1,800 rupees for 90 electricity units will be increased to 4430 rupees that is an increase of 146 percent in addition to a directive on an uninterrupted power supply the president also directed to prepare a program for the low income earners therefore we hope to implement a special program for them together with the finance ministry in addition we hope to utilize the 100 million us dollar indian credit line to introduce a program for place of worship and vocational training institutes we have taken a major step forward with the imf i believe we are getting closer to the relief that we can obtain from the IMF. The minister also noted that the electricity tariff will be reviewed every six months. When the July review comes, we will be able to ascertain the reality. The data that was available differed. With this, the Ceylon Electricity Board will be able to provide accurate data to the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka. If there's a tariff reduction, the benefit will be given to the public. I don't think there will be another increase. <laughs> A Satyagraha was launched opposite the Ministry of Power and Energy against the electricity tariff hike. 
මේ කංචන අමාත්‍යවරයා රාජ්‍ය ත්‍රස්වාදයේ මිනිස්ටර් කංචල යුටිලයිස් ස්ටේට් ටෙරරිසම් ඇන්ඩ් කන්ස්පයර්ඩ් වින් ද පබ්ලික් යුටිලිටිස් කමිෂන් ටු ඉම්ප්ලිමන්ට් ද ටැරිෆ් හයික් දැට් නෙගටිව්ලි ඉම්පැක්ට් ද පීපල් වී කැනොට් පේ දිස් සෝ වී ලොන්ච් ඩ කන්ටිනුවස් සත්‍යග්‍රහ we will come here again tomorrow if our demands are not met we will launch a fast unto death campaign no ape me illim walata pilithuru labenna naththam idiriyedi maarandika puwasayak dakwa yannadath api sudanam innin The Restaurant Owners Association noted that the prices of all bakery items will increase by 10% owing to the hike in electricity tariffs. We will be increasing the price of rice packets, kottu and other consumables sold at restaurants by 10% with effect from midnight. We are increasing prices to make the people aware of the tariff hike and to raise objections. However, we will not increase the price of short eats, hoppers, milk tea and plain tea because we need to protect the customers as well. Plain tea, mila bedi vibak shidu venni ne mukud api paribogi ke araka gata yutui. The All Salon Small Industries Association says it will be compelled to increase prices following the tariff hike. The 66% tariff hike closes the last door for our industries. What we ask the consumers is that do not curse us. We will be forced to increase the prices of all locally produced products by 15%. All clothes manufactured in Sri Lanka will see a price increase of 15%. A lunch sheet is 2 rupees and 50 cents and we will be forced to increase it by 5 rupees. Papers used to wrap food will also be increased. All food wrappings will see a price increase we will have to increase the prices of shopping bags by 15% we are doing this to protect the industries shopping bag එක ඉඳලා 115ක් 20ක් අතර මිලකින් අපිට මිල ඉහළ දාන්න සිද්ධ වෙනවා අපේ කර්මාන්ත පද්ධතිය රැක ගැනීම උදෙසා the electricity users association expressed their displeasure regarding the electricity tariff hike man hitanne meka adu aadayam labinta karapu kanata gahapu bara this is a blow to the low income earners of the country from the government we express our strong displeasure regarding this decision there is a solution for this when you are purchasing electricity a deposit is placed this amount is now over 25 billion rupees it is mentioned in the 28th clause of the act to pay the interest of this amount from 2009 this interest has not been paid for anyone we would like to tell the two new members of the public utilities commission to please read the act read the 28th clause as per what is mentioned there please take steps to pay the interest The Sri Lanka Businessmen's Collective commented on the electricity tariff hike. Interest vadi karala bank u paddathiye tiyena bank u interest vadi karala e vitarak neme. They increased the bank interest rates and also increased the taxes to an unbearable level. The 66% tariff hike directly affects the domestic user. Everything is politicized. If this country is to recover, we need policies. We cannot maintain our businesses. The 66% tariff hike is unbearable. E 100 ta 6 ta 6th vadi karup eka dara ganna baha 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 mai. The latest tariff revision was implemented with the approval of the three members of the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka and the chairman of the PUCSL Janaka Ratnayake had opposed this move. Questions were raised if action will be taken with regard to the PUCSL chairman. As the subject minister there's a procedure that I need to follow. It is currently underway. There's a legal process to remove him from the post starting with the presentation of a charge sheet. Our objective was for an uninterrupted power supply. We were focused on addressing any shortcomings in this process. The process will be followed accordingly. The chairman of the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka spoke to reporters from overseas. What happened yesterday was something that should never have happened. When the chairman and the director general are not in the country, they summon the acting director general and the commission secretary to the president's office and prepared some documents there. 
It is not wise to impose on an independent commission. If the law of the country is not respected, where will this country lead to? The members had convened without my knowledge and had illegally amended the tariff without calling for the stakeholders' consultations as well. I, Janakarat Nayaka, as the chairman, will personally take all legal action and seek relief over this matter. The Kalpiti police sealed the office of the chairman of the Public Utilities Commission as per an order issued by the Fort Magistrates Court. This was confirmed by the police spokesperson, SSP Nihal Thalduwa. He said that the court order was obtained after reporting facts to the court with regard to information that claimed that events that caused inconveniences to the government were taking place within the office. The police spokesperson said that the chairman of the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka, Janaka Ratnayaka, is currently overseas and the office will be reopened in his presence when he returns to the island. During the discussion at the president's office, a comment had been made to seal my office. Today, a court order was obtained for that. I am not against it. I am a public servant and a chairman of an independent commission. Everything in my office belongs to the government. However, the chair and the table belongs to me. I will never use government chairs and tables. It is a good thing. They have prevented a third party from entering the office and framing me. I am thankful to the OIC of the police and the political authority for that. We'll be back after a short commercial break. Stay with us. News first. Main sponsor. Durden's Hospital. Dedicated to you. Experience the best in healthcare at Durden's Hospital. We continue to evolve into a purpose-built hospital built to deliver world-class care. Trust in us for all your healthcare needs. Durden's Hospital. Dedicated to you. Sri Lanka, the election headquarters. The petition filed with the Supreme Court against the circular issued by Public Administration Secretary Neil Bandara Hapuhinda to suspend the acceptance of bonds for the local government election will be taken up for consideration on the 23rd of February. The petition against the circular by the Public Administration Secretary Neil Bandar Hapuhinna was called up in the presence of Supreme Court Justices Priyanta Jayawardana, Murdu Fernando and Achala Venkapuli on Thursday. President's Counsel Upul Jai Surya appearing for the petitioner requested the court to consider the petition at an earlier date, noting that the circular was issued in an attempt to obstruct the people's franchise. Additional Solicitor General Neril Pulle appearing for the Attorney General informed the court that the letter was issued on the directive of the Cabinet Secretary and it was recalled several hours later by the Secretary to the Ministry of Public Administration, Home Affairs, Provincial Councils and Local Government. He also noted that an apology was also made to the National Election Commission. Government printer Gangani Lienage said that the process of printing material for the local government election is stalled due to insufficient police security. Speaking to reporters on Wednesday, she said that sufficient police protection is necessary during the process to print material for the election. When a request was made by the National Election Commission, it was forwarded to a DIG to provide security. As security was not provided, I met with them and then I informed the DIG of the required number. I requested for at least eight officers for the postal vote process. I am yet to receive those officers. Speaking to News First, she noted that the security details to provide protection for ballot paper printing should at least contain 65 police officers. She said that the security division of the government printer is currently being deployed for the printing process related to the local government election. However, the staff have expressed their displeasure over this move. The Employees' Union of the Government Printer convened a media briefing. Earlier the printing of ballot papers for the postal vote, election day ballot papers and other official documents were done at once. However, this time around it is done separately. 600,000 documents is a small number and the government printer can provide the material within days. 
However, we are suspicious as to why it took so long to print the material. It is clear that there is an attempt to influence the government printer to hinder the election process. As far as we are aware, the postal vote ballot paper for 10 districts have already been printed. <laughs> The government printer said that the required funds for the process to print election material was not received even on Thursday. According to the government printer, the total printing cost for the local government election is 400 million rupees. The SJB commented on this development. The cost is estimated at 400 million rupees and 40 million rupees was given by the Treasury. The National Election Commission has also given 100 million rupees. So another 100 million rupees or so is required for this process. If the government does not have the funds, we will appeal from all the businesses in the country to make their contributions. A similar cost was incurred on the Independence Day celebrations. We warned about this when 200 million rupees was spent to fire into the sky and obtain salutes. If that money was kept safe, this situation would have never arisen. The National People's Power filed a complaint with the Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka, citing that the state officials were obstructing the people's right to expression. The government, including several state officials, namely the government printer, treasury secretary, attorney general, inspector general of police, are directly linked to the attempt to curtail the people's right to expression and exercise their franchise. The president and the cabinet have intervened to conspire with state officials. We filed a complaint with the Human Rights Commission and we are positive of a fruitful outcome. The local government election was declared. The cabinet has reached a decision to suspend this election. Several state officials are acting on that decision and because of that, the postal votes have been delayed. However, it is clear that the cabinet and several officials are engaged in a dishonest act. The right to vote is a fundamental right. It needs to be given priority. If the cabinet is deciding against that, it is unconstitutional. The letter sent to the Speaker by 14 SLPP MPs citing that their parliamentary privileges were violated as the National Election Commission failed to apprise the Parliament with regard to the issues that have arisen over the local government election has now been included in the Parliament agenda. The 14 SLPP MPs call for the appointment of a special parliamentary select committee to inquire into the violation of their parliamentary privileges. The letter notes that two members of the National Election Commission had decided to call for the local government election on the 9th of March and had obtained the consent of the other three members. The MPs point out that the Finance Secretary had already informed the court with regard to the difficulties in sourcing funds for the March election and given such a situation, there are concerns about whether the NEC can be satisfied with the preconditions necessary to hold an election. 14 SLPP MPs including Garmini Lokuge, Lalit Varna Kumara, Upul Rajapaksa and Sudarshana Denipitiya signed this letter. The Freedom People's Congress, in a letter to the Prime Minister, have requested for Parliament to be summoned immediately under Standing Order 16. The letter notes that the decision to indefinitely delay the issuing of ballot papers for the local government election is a threat to Sri Lanka's democracy. The letter further notes that the National Election Commission had observed that the reason for the decision to indefinitely delay the issuing of ballot papers for the local government election was that the Treasury had failed to deliver funds for printing and based on that, the government printer had refused to go ahead with the printing process. It notes that Parliament should convene immediately as public representatives as the legislators are bound to control the undemocratic situation and manage the situation as well. 14 MPs had signed the letter that was addressed to the Prime Minister. Opposition parties continued with their campaigns for the upcoming local government polls. Opposition leader Sajid Premadas attended the Samagi Janabalavegya rally held in Gampola. The opposition leader spoke about the increase in electricity tariffs. Mechala Davas, Tibunu Rasvi Maladi, Mama Kiwa, 
During the recent meetings, I said that electricity tariffs will definitely be increased. How can people live now? How can people continue their livelihoods? How can they continue in their industries? How can they do business? How can small and medium scale businesses survive? How can people who want to start up a business bear this cost? It's hard to even imagine. Honestly, it is hard to bear this cost. I would like to stress that this corrupt elephant Pohutu regime will be chased away and we will be dedicated to create an era where the lives of the people can prosper. A meeting between the intellectuals, professionals and business leaders of the National People's Power took place in Gaul on Wednesday. We need a good foundation because the existing one is decaying. There are a few characteristics of this new foundation. One is to abolish the executive presidency and bring about a new constitution. We also need a government free of fraud, corruption and waste. Then we need an efficient public service. We also need a just legal system for all. We need the respect of the world. We also need national unity instead of hate. We need to build on these six principles. How can we develop our human resources? We need this foundation for that purpose. The Inter-University Students Federation says the government is continuing to explore options to delay the election. What is Ranil Vikramasinghe's plan? His plan is to continue without the local government election. When a massive anti-government sentiment is created following the local government election, the government cannot continue to move forward. The SLPP-led parliament cannot continue. They are trying to use various tactics to delay this. Ranil Vikramasinghe is planning to somehow how obtain the IMF funds and stay on until the next presidential election. The US delegation that arrived in the country on Tuesday night aboard two US Air Force planes had met with State Ministry of Defense Pramitha Bandara Tenakon and Secretary of Defense Retired General Kamal Gunaratna. Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Indo-Pacific Security Affairs, Jedediah P. Royal led the delegation that arrived in the country on Tuesday night aboard two U.S. Air Force planes. The U.S. delegation met with the State Minister of Defense, Pramita Bandara Tenakon, and Secretary of Defense Ministry, Retired General Kamal Gunaratna at the Defense Ministry. A statement noted that the discussions were centered on boosting U.S. Sri Lanka ties. In addition, security cooperation enhancement and regional defense stability enhancement were also discussed. The three teenage boys who were arrested for beating to death a father of one with motorcycle helmets in Valipanna were produced in court on Thursday and were thereafter moved to detention where they will be held until the 28th of February. Rangaviraj Jayasinghe was a father of a beautiful 11-month-old girl. 34-year-old Ranga quit his job recently with the aim of travelling overseas. On Valentine's Day, he decided to use the Kurudi Quitter Road from the Valagedara Galmatha Junction to proceed to a shop. During the journey, he had come across a group of teenagers who were recklessly travelling on motorcycles along that road. He had gone to the shop to buy bread. Then he has seen some boys on the road riding recklessly. He advised them not to ride like that. An argument had broken out and it escalated into an ugly brawl. According to the police investigation, several teenagers, who are also school students, had assaulted Rangaviraj Jaisingha with motorcycle helmets, leading to serious injuries. Following the brutal attack, Ranga was rushed to the Nagoda hospital. Unfortunately, he succumbed to his injuries. The situation is such that an adult cannot even advise the kids. We demand justice. Parents must understand how to raise their children. You must raise them well without paving the way for others to do that. The 
They were produced to court and were ordered to be detained at the child remand home in Markola until the 28th of February. These teenagers are from the same school that the late Rangaja Singha's wife is employed at. What is the issue that led to a daughter losing the love of a father? Why did these boys commit such a heinous crime? Only a proper investigation will reveal the answers to these questions. The post-mortem examination was performed at the Nagoda Hospital and thereafter the body was handed over to the relatives who said the final rites will take place on Friday. Lanka Satosa has reduced the prices of six essential goods with effect from Thursday. One kilogram of potatoes has been reduced by 20 rupees. The new price is 375 rupees. One kilogram of big onions has been reduced by 10 rupees. The new price is 149 rupees. One kilogram of imported white samba rice has been reduced by 7 rupees. The new price is 198 rupees. The revised price of one kilogram of red dal is 358 rupees. One kilogram of local red kakalu rice and imported white kakalu rice has been reduced by 5 rupees each to 164 rupees and 179 rupees respectively. A press conference organized by Industrial Global Union was held on Thursday to address the issues and to extend solidarity with the Sri Lankan people under the present economic crisis. General Secretary of the Industrial Global Union, Atle Hoye, was questioned on his stance of the IMF loan and if Sri Lanka needs the IMF loan. In the situation you're in now where you're forfeited the loans, obviously you need something to get between now and this position where the country is self-sustained. So in the short term, I would probably say that yes, you would need more loans to cover that period. But all organizations, government in Sri Lanka, need to think long term, how do we build a society that creates the revenue the country needs to be self-sufficient. As an organization, industry all uh, have regular discussions with the IMF, with the World Bank, with all of these institutions to make sure that they are more fair in their setting of conditions for loans. But of course, we have to realize that anybody who wants to lend money to someone would want their money back. Nobody wants to lend money to someone who would not give it back. Then you would come into another kind of discussion. So when the IMF lends money, they want their money back. So it's just a question of what conditions. And our organization, together with our affiliates in Sri Lanka and other countries, will always fight for fair conditions when a loan is necessary. We would, of course, like to see a society where it wasn't necessary, but that doesn't seem to become the case in many years to come. And probably for Sri Lanka that has now defaulted on its loans, will still be dependent on IMF loans for quite a few years to come. In the eyes to propose to China and other creditors to take haircuts on loans offered to poor countries. India is drafting a proposal for G20 countries to help debt nations badly hit by the economic fallout from the pandemic and Ukraine war by asking lenders including China, the world's largest sovereign creditor, to take a large haircut on loans. The proposal comes as finance ministers and central bank chiefs from the group of 20 prepare to meet in Bangalore next week. The gathering will be the first major event of India's one-year presidency of the G20, a bloc composed of the world's biggest economies. India and the Paris Club of Creditors recently told the IMF they supported Sri Lanka's debt restructuring plan as a bankrupt nation sought a 2.9 billion US dollar loan. The United States said earlier this month it was willing to do its part too, but that quote, we need to seek credible and specific assurances that China will meet the IMF standard of debt relief, end quote. The Export-Import Bank of China has offered Sri Lanka a two-year moratorium on its debt and said it would support the country's efforts to secure an IMF program, which a Sri Lankan government source said was not enough. The IMF, the World Bank and the United States have pushed for so-called Common Framework, a G20 initiative that was launched in 2020 to help poor countries delay debt repayments to be expanded to include middle-income countries, but China has resisted. In December, World Bank President David Malpass said the world's poorest countries owed 62 billion US dollars in annual debt service to bilateral creditors, a year-on-year -year increase of 35 percent, triggering high risk of defaults. Transparency International Sri Lanka has filed a fundamental rights case regarding controversial medical supplies procurement through the Indian credit line. 
Transparency International Sri Lanka filed a fundamental rights petition in the Supreme Court naming 47 respondents in relation to the steps taken by the Cabinet of Ministers, the Minister of Health and the National Medicines Regulatory Authority or NMRA to procure medical supplies from two Indian private companies. This case is filed in the public interest and challenges the following. The role of the Cabinet of Ministers in procuring medical supplies through unregistered private suppliers. The role of the NMRA in providing a waiver of registration to procure medical supplies from unregistered suppliers. Non-compliance with procurement guidelines including the emergency procurement process. Abuse of the process by Minister of Health and the Chief Executive Officer of the NMRA. TISL alleges that the citizens' fundamental rights to equality and the right of access to information have been violated along with serious disregard for the health, safety and well-being of the people and in total abuse of public trust and public funds. The petition seeks interim orders against the procurement based on this unsolicited proposal and the placing of any orders, approvals for waiver registration of 38 drugs, importation of said drugs into Sri Lanka and making payments for such drugs. The Commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption, the Director General of Customs, the Inspector General of Police, Severit Pharmaceuticals Private Limited, Kausik Therapeuticals Limited and the Attorney General are also named as respondents in this petition. In sports news, Australia women won their ICC T20 World Cup 2023 clash against Sri Lanka by 10 wickets in South Africa. Sri Lanka's top order made a decent start after Meg Lanning won the toss and opted to bowl first. Sri Lanka women lost wickets at regular intervals and posted 112 for the loss of 8. Australia women reached the target in just 16 overs thanks to an unbeaten 113-run partnership between Beth Mooney and Alyssa Hilly. Chris Harris has pulled off an absolute blinder. Kind of landed on the map. That's one. To me, Shrat Nike, of course. And in your news overseas, U.S. actress Raquel Welsh has died at the age of 82. Her manager said that the star passed away peacefully on Wednesday morning after a brief illness. Welsh became an international symbol in the 1960s, widely remembered for playing a cave woman in the 1966 film One Million Years BC. She also won a Golden Globe for her role in the 1974's The Three Musketeers. Born in 1940, Welsh grew up in California, where she won teen beauty pageants and later became a local weather forecaster. In a career spanning over five decades, Welsh appeared in more than 30 movies and 50 television shows. It included playing the love interest of Frank Sinatra's character in 1968's Lady in Cement, the titular transgender heroine in 1970's Myra Breckenridge, and the Golden Globe nominated performance in the 1987 TV drama Right to Die. And that's a wrap of Primetime News. Thank you for watching. For all these stories and much more, you can visit our website. That is www.newsfirst.lk. Thank you and good night.